Welcome to Cooking Like Ramos. I thought I would start this video a little differently, so I'm taking you to two local businesses that I love to source great quality ingredients. So I'm meeting Salvatore at Parliamentary in Southbourne to buy some pancetta and some amazing local eggs. Selection of cheeses here, so you've got like your sort of Dorset Red, Old Winchester, Cornish Yarn, or some Blues. And if you have a local to Southbourne, Bournemouth, pop down in. Um, Salvatore is just preparing the pancetta. Oh, this is it. Uh, ideally, traditionally, it should be guanciale, which is another cut of uh, sweet pig. Uh, but it's pretty good. Now a very short walk away, we're going to go meet Giovanni at Deli Rocks. So in here I'm going to be buying some Pecorino cheese. Um, I just wanted to use the Pecorino Romano because it's the traditional cheese that you'd use for the carbonara. Also he's got some amazing spaghetti as well which I wanted to use for this dish. So, so I took the opportunity to get myself a little coffee. They do a sandwich here called the, is it the hippie? I'll find out the name of it but it is freaking amazing. It's the sandwich you do, the hippie. Hippie <laughs> pig Yeah, hippie pig. Nice. It's a hippie pig It's for rye bread with sunflower seeds. Yeah. You also got in the artichoke part, some blessed tomatoes, raw peppers, aubergines, homemade pesto rocket, three kinds of cheese on that. That's all you need, that's, that's all, all you need. need. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking good. Hello lovely YouTube, my name is Pedro and welcome to Cooking Like Ramos. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make the most amazing carbonara. But before we do that, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell and if you don't follow me on Instagram and Facebook, find me, it's Cooking Like Ramos. Easy. Right, so I'm going to go through exactly what the ingredients are that we're going to use to make the most amazing carbonara. So if you follow me, you're going to need a little bit of butter, some pecorino or parmesan cheese, but more traditionally pecorino, some parsley, local um, delicious eggs, some pancetta or guanciale, pancetta is a bit more widely available, some salt and pepper, finally um, some spaghetti or you could use bucatini. Cool, let's get on with the dish. Just going to add some salt to boiling water. Okay, make sure it is bubbling. And you want to season it pretty well, but don't over season it because obviously the pancetta is quite salty. Okay. Always read the label of the spaghetti or the pasta that you're going to cook. Uh, this one's going to take between eight to nine minutes, so I'll cook it for for eight minutes. So it's got that al dente texture to it. You do not want to cook overcooked pasta because there's nothing worse than Okay, that's it. 125 grams per, per portion per person. Get your spaghetti, pop it in the middle, let it cook. Do not need to add any oil, just salt, that's all you need. And then you should stir it so it doesn't stick together. Okay, and that's what the bubbling is going to do so the spaghetti sort of moves away from each other. Just want to give it a nice stir. 
and now, so the spaghetti is fully submerged. I'm gonna cook that now for eight to nine minutes. And now just add some olive oil to your frying pan. Okay. A little bit of butter. About a tablespoon. The reason I've added olive oil and butter is if you add the butter on its own, the uh, butter will burn. Time to add the pancetta. I'm going to make the sauce now, the base of the sauce with the eggs. So I'm going to go in with this egg, I'm going to pack it in, come over here so I can show you. So one whole egg. Two whole eggs, straight in there. If there's more people, add more yolk. Just as a little tip actually, see there there's a bit of shell. If you use the egg, it's easier to get the shell out. And voila. There now I'm gonna whisk the eggs. You wanna add around two to three tablespoons of the pecorino cheese or parmesan. I'll leave some for the for the end as well, and just give that a little bit of whisk. And I'm going to add just a pinch of parsley. I'm going to leave some for the end as well. There you go. Give that really, really good stir. That fresh smell of the parsley is absolutely amazing. The sauce ready. So I'm just going to check on the pancetta. The pancetta is cooking really well. You don't want to overcook it, um, but it's really, really cooking well. You can see it's starting to crisp up in certain places, so you want nice sort of textures. It smells literally divine. Right at this stage with the pancetta, it's been around four minutes. I'm going to now turn off the heat completely. I'm just going to set it to the side. Okay. And you want it to actually cool down. Best way to check is to taste it. It's done. I'm going to turn off the heat now for the pasta. It's been eight minutes. That's really perfectly cooked now. Al dente, which is what the Italians love. You always bring the spaghetti or pasta into the sauce. Just get that mixed together. So the heat of the spaghetti and the heat of the pancetta is what's going to create this creamy sauce. So I'm going to slowly integrate it. Okay. Look at that. Mix it really, really well. As you can tell, if you get close to that, that's how you create that creamy sauce. No scrambled egg, beautiful, creamy carbonara with no cream. Okay, you do not need any cream. Get a little bit more pasta water, add it to it. If you want it a bit creamier, now, with a spaghetti carbonara, you want to serve this quickly. You do not want to wait around. So I'm going to plate this up and my camera man and I are going to munch on this. Right. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Do not waste any of it. Okay. Now, at this stage, I'm going to go in with a bit more, a bit more cheese. And a bit more parsley. Now the most important part of the carbonara, the black pepper. And you want to add a lot of black pepper. Right so here we have it, my beautiful spaghetti a la carbonara. This is a really really simple dish to make, tastes amazing, absolutely no cream, okay. I hope I've done the Italians justice to this amazing dish from Rome. And I hope you guys enjoy it if you do make it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Make sure you click the notification bell and follow me on my social media platforms as well. Thanks guys, we're gonna go try this now.